it's Sammy from Sammy Sweet Life and today we are talking Peloton. I am super excited about this one because they are talking the Peloton row. That's what they're calling the rower. It's just the Peloton row and I'm super duper excited about it. I did get on the email list. I am hesitant about the price of it. Last week I compared it to the Concept 2. Well the Concept 2 doesn't have a big TV screen on it so it really should be more compared to the Hydro which is $2,500 but Hydro came out with a cheaper version of it and I think somebody said it was like $1,000 less so about $1,500. So I'm expecting it to be somewhere in between $1,500 and $2,500 and I personally wouldn't get a Hydro just because I don't want two subscriptions. I'm already hooked into the Peloton system so I would pay maybe a tiny bit more for the Peloton versus the Hydro so I don't have that extra subscription fee because if you do both of them like you have the Hydro rower and the Peloton bike you have two subscriptions and I don't want to do that so I thought you know I might end up going up to like 2500 ish dollars and that's going to be my upper limit before I was thinking oh I'm going to go up to like 1500 max because the concept too is a thousand bucks but I was looking at it and I really just don't like that it's just the teeny tiny screen and there's no real good place to put a tablet I would have to have my own tablet and like having my iPad charged and ready to go is a whole separate thing I don't have it done most of the time that would be just like another contraption I have to worry about there are like secondhand things or accessory things you can get through the company that makes the concept too that you can hook an iPad to it but it's again like another layer of stuff. So I feel like I've come back from my original statement. So if I spend a lot of money on the rower, you know, like what my thought process is, I kind of backpedaled a little bit. I'm kind of backtracking from last week where I'm like, I'm not going to spend above a thousand dollars. Well, I feel like with the big giant TV screen and it being into the Peloton system, I may be able to splurge on this. So we'll see. I really, really love the way that it's designed. I feel like the concept too is kind of blah. The hydro does look really pretty, but I just don't love it well i do love the peloton one i love like the back little triangle piece at the end of it it just looks so sleek and beautiful and i i just really like the full shots of it and i like that you can also store it upright i can see it fitting into our home gym really really nicely probably i wouldn't have to put it up all the time but if i wanted to do like floor activities to make more room i could stack it upright and then i would have more floor space so i'm thinking I probably will still get it depending on the price again. It's just price dependent and when I see the price tag, I'll have to decide right then. But it's just so pretty. I'm gonna throw things up on the screen. They did start a sign up thing, so you can sign up via email if you are interested in the rower. I went ahead and did that. I wanna know everything about it. I wanna know when the price comes out. I wanna know when the pre-orders start, if they do pre-orders or when you can actually order it. Rower looks amazing. It looks like Adrian Williams is for sure doing rowing classes. He is shown in the like preview thing. And also it has been rumored that Matt Wilpers will and also an Olympic athlete. I cannot pronounce his last name. I'll throw it up on the screen here, but he's an Olympic rower. It's rumored that he might be joining Peloton. He's been spotted in a couple of the Peloton group photos and people are like, hmm, that guy's in there. He's not a Peloton member yet. So hopefully he'll have some female rower athletes as well. I think that Matt Wilpers would be a great choice. I love how technical he is on the bike. I feel like I've become a better cycler because of him and taking some of his classes. He's just very technical. He gives you the information you need to know and I just really, really like him. I didn't like him at first because I didn't really know what I was doing and he did this thing in one of the classes early on in my Peloton experience where you unclip one leg and you pedal with the other leg and then you put that leg back in unclip the second leg and pedal with the opposite leg and it was so hard and felt so awkward. Anyway, I don't know much more. They haven't said dates, they haven't said price, they just show pictures and yeah, I'm excited. It looks pretty. So that's the main like excitement of this video. The other excitement is that I am in week two of my power zone training and I was not feeling my ride this morning. I was feeling a little bit blah, I didn't sleep very well and I didn't end up riding early this morning. But by lunchtime, I'm like, oh, I'm itching to get on the bike and ride a little bit. So I did my second 45 minutes for week two and it was really good. It was Olivia. I don't really take a whole lot of classes from her because she is so hard. I find any of her classes super hard. She goes super high cadence and this one I feel like she toned back a little bit but it was still so hard we did a 10 minute of zone three and that's three out of seven um, exertion and it was tough like I was dripping sweat I ended up having to redo my makeup completely I had done my makeup in the morning because we have things to do and then I had to like fully take off my makeup shower because I was just pouring with sweat <laughs> like 
super sweaty. And that's like, that's why my hair is all crazy because I just jumped out of the shower, put on makeup and then came in to film this. But I really, really liked that. I will link to the Power Zone Pack website. You can play along with it, but you can't join the actual challenge itself right now. Once there's a cutoff, they don't let people like add back into it, but I'm super excited about it. I feel like already in week two, I'm getting better. It's really to just improve your endurance and improve your VO2 max endurance and build up your glycogen stores and all the things you need to do like longer distance things and I'm feeling it already like I was super duper tired after my 60 minute class and I needed a rest day after that but yeah going into this week I'm really enjoying it. I've got four more weeks after this week and I really think I'm gonna have to redo my FTP because already she was saying, okay, it's zone one time and it's really hard for me to stay in zone one. I really feel like zone three is a stretch, zone four is a stretch, but when they're trying to tell me to stay in zone one, it's really hard for me. I feel like if I lower my resistance too much, my legs feel bouncy and I don't feel very stable. So I have to have a little bit of resistance under me. And if I pedal even at all, I'm going into zone two. So I'm gonna have to redo my FTP definitely by the end of this, but I'm just really happy with it. I feel like it's really pushing me and stretching me and I feel really good about it. I feel good at the end of the rides. I'm like, dang, I just did a 45 minute ride and I was all into it. And usually like, for Pelo Fondo and stuff, I stick at a certain pace. I don't follow their cues. I don't really push super hard. And this, I have pushed myself super hard. So I'm, I'm kind of proud of myself, pat myself on the back that I am sticking with it and continuing on with it. I will have a 60 minute class. I'll probably do a rest day or a small ride tomorrow and then go to the 60 minute the next day. As far as noteworthy classes, I have one that I probably will take this class tomorrow. There's a Rocky Horror Picture Show class. I did not know this. Somebody had posted about it in one of the Facebook groups and I'm like, hey, I wanna take that, it sounds fun. So I did bookmark that one, I will link it down below. It's a Jess Sims 30 minute ride. Um, as far as classes, I'm looking through my class list. I really, really liked the um, strength training class I took, but I have to talk about that a little bit more. There were actually two Bradley Rose rides that I took last, like the end of last week into this week, and I really liked them. It was a 30 minute 2010s ride, I will link to it down below. And also, what's the other one called? A 30 minute pop ride, and it was really good. I just loved the music in that one. And he's always just a great mix of fun and goofy where the time kind of flies, and also really inspirational where I kick butt and push really hard just because of the things he says. So I like that he's a combo of both. You get some levity and you also get some hard work, inspiration, tough love type of stuff. So I will link to both of those classes down below. They were really, really good classes. I won't link to the Power Zone classes, but I'll link you to that website. So you can check them out. They're all listed there so you can find them easily if you're interested in any of those classes. There's two things I wanna talk about. One of them being strength. I did start back into some strength training and I had my first little headache last night since taking my new migraine medicine. So I had done an arm and light weights class early on this week. And then I took yesterday, I didn't ride, but I took an arms and light weights, one of the Maddie core classes, and also a 20 minute strength class, which is the one I say is a favorite. It's the 20 minute pop punk arms and shoulders. And I took that one, it was a 20 minute class and it kicked my butt and I feel like I may have just overdone it because I did the arms and light weights and then that. So it was 30 minutes of arms when I'm not really used to doing much arms at this point. You know, I've been done with strength for quite a while now, just many weeks of me having migraine issues and then taking it really easy. So I think I just overdid it. So moving forward, I'm gonna stick with just the 10 minute arms and lights weights. I never say it right. 10 minute arm, arms and light weights class. Um, I'll stick with three of those a week and move on from there. So I feel like when I get a handle on that, I can add in a little bit more, but 30 minutes of arms is just not happening right now. I did end up with that little headache. It was the first one. And I don't know if it really has anything to do with doing so much arms, but I don't want to risk it. I don't want to try again for a little while. I'll just try to get used to those 10 minute arms classes for now. And then the core also, um, the Maddie core, I'm just gonna try to slowly incorporate things in. So right now, I'm just gonna be doing the arms and light weights classes, and I'm doing so much leg stuff that I don't wanna incorporate too much leg day stuff because I just don't have like endless amounts of time. I have a certain set amount of time for exercising and that's it. I'm really concentrating on the power zone classes and that's mostly what I'm doing right now and I'll continue with that, but I wanna throw in a little bit of arms as well. But yeah, I'll link to that. It was a Cali class and I really like her. I know a couple of people who don't really like her that much because she's very um, like bubbly and perky and some people don't jive with that, but I find her just, just perky enough that she's not annoying to me. <laughs> like just perky enough that's peppy and fun and I enjoy 
taking some of her classes. So as far as other Peloton news, my interface got updated. Like when I go to the home thing, all this stuff is different. I will throw something up on the screen so you guys can see, but I love, I don't know that this was a thing because I never really went to the home screen one because it didn't have a whole lot of good stuff on it. Um, but it's got your bookmarks, your stack, and then also your calendar up at the top buttons. It tells you your week streak. It tells you lots of activity about your seven day, 30 day, and 90 day information. I wish it had mileage here, but it does not. It has other things that you can look at. And then it has fitness categories, your active challenges, so you can just swipe through those. It'll give you some of the live and upcoming classes and then all the different things, recommendations for you, different categories and things. I never really flip through that. I always just go and search and filter for what I want, but I really like that it has everything up on the screen. And then also there's a red circle, and this is one of the things I have to gripe about here coming up, but the little red circle is going to the Just Workout, which I think is a great option. I love being able to use like the just walk and just outdoor cycling thing because we just got bikes. We've been using those a little bit, um, but I like this. You can just click on the little red thing and it pops up with your workout things. And they just added a ton of new things to this that used to only be outdoor walk, outdoor running, and then outdoor cycling, but now it has a ton of options. So you can totally use this in the gym for whatever activities you want that aren't Peloton. Um, specific classes. So I'm going to walk down the categories and of course show this to you guys as well up on the screen. It's outdoor walking, outdoor cycling, outdoor running, regular cycling, regular running, walking, yoga, strength, cardio, meditation, and stretching. So you can pick any of those categories and then get the credit in the Peloton app, which I think is great because there are some days I don't want to do actual Peloton specific things, but I still want to be a little bit active. I still want my blue circle. So I have been using the, um, you know, the Apple Watch workout thing where I just do an outdoor walk or something, but I wouldn't get credit on here. I had tried loading in a couple of the um, like outdoor walk things, but if you're not careful, like there'll be 20 minutes long or whatever. And if you don't catch it at the 20 minute mark, you don't get credit for any more time of your walk. So I really love the idea of this. But in practice, I don't get credit for my mileage. And that's what peeves me off. <laughs> I'm like, okay, if I'm taking an outdoor walk, I know about how much the loops are because I have tracked them before on my watch. And we will do a like a 45 minute walk around the neighborhood. I know which loops we're taking. So I know like almost exactly what mileage I should have had. And it'll be like, I have 0.2 of a mile in 45 minutes. I'm like, no Peloton, <laughs> you're wrong, that's not the mileage. So in practice, it does not work that well. Could be that the GPS is kind of spotty where we are. I have seen people talk about this to where they don't get the mileage if their phone is in a stroller versus on their body, but I haven't noticed the difference. It's sometimes in my pocket or in my fanny pack, it's sometimes actually on the stroller, I never get credit for it. So I think it's a GPS cell service thing because there's different spots in our neighborhood that are spotty and yeah. Don't get all the credit even on my outdoor cycling i'll put this on versus the strava i'll do this one on it will give me like 0.15 of a mile i'm like i know i just cycled like two miles because i know which loops are which and i'll compare it to taking the same loop doing it with the strava app or the outdoor cycling app on the apple watch and they will give me the full credit of the mileage and the peloton one won't for some reason it just does not so you have to probably have really, really good cell service, GPS service where you are if you want to get your mileage counting, but it does count the minutes. So I like that. And my other gripe with it, I have one more gripe. <laughs> We're getting all ranty here. Um, the other gripe is um, it's kind of annoying, but the Apple Watch, when I'm done walking, it'll remind me, it'll be like, are you still working out? And it'll kind of vibrate and ask me like, are you still working out? And I can X out of it. The Peloton thing doesn't. So there have been times where I just took my phone in the house. It's still running a walk and it gives me like 30 extra minutes of credit because I don't flip open my phone and realize I'm still doing a Peloton thing. But yeah, I find it really annoying when we're taking walks with the kids. Like we're stopping and going a lot. It's very leisurely. The kids are like Stella wants to be out of the stroller some of the time. So we're barely moving some of the time. And my watch will constantly be like, are you still working out? Are you still alive? And it really like, I feel like it's pestering me, like heckling me a little bit because it's like, are you really working out? Or are you just lying about working out? So I do not like that it constantly reminds that. There needs to be some sort of setting like, I am outdoor walking with children, so I cannot go as fast as you think I should be going right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do like it reminds me because I'll be in the garage, like putting up the stroller, getting shoes off kids. And um, 
it'll be like, hey, are you all done working out? And it's like, oh, thank you for reminding me this time. Not the 40 times like while we were actually walking, but this time it's actually a good reminder. Anyway, that's all the news I have to discuss. Of course, as new Peloton Row things come out, I will talk about them in this video and I will make some sort of decision about whether or not we are gonna get it. I really wanna get it. I hope the price is competitive, especially with the Hydro. And I would like, you know, I already paid the subscription fee. I might as well get my most money's use out of it. Um, but we'll see. I don't know yet. I just, I'm not sure I can justify anything more expensive than what's already out there as far as like being like, hey, honey, I want to get a rower. He's gonna be like, okay, why is that one $1,000 more than the other expensive rowers, you know? Like what, what's the difference? So I would really have to have a real good reason to justify it other than just like wanting to blow that much extra money to get the Peloton one. Although it probably will be good. I know my bike is a really good bike, so it may be worth it in the end. I know the other rowers are good too. Anyway, I hope you guys like this video. What do you think of the pictures of the rower? Are you into it or are you not into it? What do you think? I would love to know down in the comments section. Keep the conversation going down there. I'm super excited about the rower coming out. So I have lots of things to say. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.